for holding back the light you give to me for every feeling that I've denied for all of it I could have turned to tears but turned inside for every heart could not open to and all the dreams I never dared for all the time I turned my back on truth when I was scared I forgive myself I forgive myself Sweet streams wash me Blaming you when life got hard to live For all the joy I could not see For everyone whom I could not forgive Or let go free I forgive myself Wash me down, pour your grace all over me, lift me up to a higher ground where I can see. I don't know, but I've been taught. When I first heard this song many years ago, I was angry at God. I was especially angry at Jesus. My topic for today is how did Jesus teach and heal? And so I share this with you to help you to understand my relationship to Jesus. I was incredibly angry at Jesus, men, and child abuse. At that time in my life, I was working at Kids in Distress, 
a shelter um, and intensive treatment program for children who were so seriously abused below the age of six, they had to be taken out of the home and put into a shelter for a long time. And it was making me jaded. It was making me mad. Um, the priests, the ministers, the Boy Scout leaders that abused these children. And many of them were Christian. And I just was perseverating on this fact <laughs> and really angry at Jesus. I remember in my prayer life, I was saying things like, what's wrong with you? You're supposed to be so powerful. Can you do something with these people? Why are you letting them blaspheme your name? If this is who you are, I don't want anything about you. I would have these dialogues with him. And you know, I'm a lover of Jesus and I um, have been a lover of um, the Christian tradition um, my whole life for what it really was. And like the Jews who put that, you know, uh, mark on the door, I was constantly putting a mark on the door, constantly acting out against what people told me about Jesus. You know, I think I shared with you once before, I was even dumped by a guy who was a fundamentalist Christian and I really liked him a lot. So I kept going to church with him and I would cry like I am now, cry, but you know, even more because they kept playing things like, you know, did you know how they crucified my Lord? And, you know, just bringing up all those horrifying moments that I didn't think were what Jesus was all about. So I was in a forgiveness process, <laughs> thinking I was forgiving my dad or, you know, my husband at the time or, you know, some person that I was angry at in, a, in this um, ritual forgiveness process. And I realized that I was so angry at Jesus that his face came into my process. And I said what I had been saying in my prayer life, how could you? <laughs> Like, how could you have these hateful people as your followers, you know, you know, including the, you know, this person who had dumped me, you know, years ago. And, you know, so he had this amazing love in this experience I had of him. And he said, please do not hold me accountable for Christians. I am not one. I never was. And at that time, I really didn't understand that that word wasn't a Jesus word. Like it didn't even make any sense to me. And so I didn't get that until much later in my life. But, you know, Jesus was a Jew. I kind of got that. But he also said this to me. I choose not to judge. Why do you? So I loved him even more because I realized how difficult it is not to be angry back, not to judge, not to condemn those who condemn you, to actually follow the bless those that curse you that he told us. What I know about Jesus is that he taught by his thoughts his words and his actions. And in his daily life, he practiced prayer and he went up to mountains and he went off into boats with his friends and he fished and he meditated and he relaxed and he contemplated. And he went off into Bethany to Martha's house where Lazarus and Mary also lived for fellowship, he was human. And he did not separate himself from his followers. And he made sure before he died to tell them he called them friends and that there was no secret teaching, that he shared everything he knew with them. He did not want to be deified. He was so angry at times in his life at the hardness of people's hearts 
that he did things that cost him his life. He got so angry at the money changers who took advantage of the poor that some accounts, historical documents say, he whipped them and threw them out of the temple. And that perhaps that is what eventually got him killed. Jesus was betrayed, abandoned, rejected, scorned, and ridiculed. And he kept doing what he was doing, calmly, courageously, and consistently, rebelling against both the religious and the political and the social rules of his time. And if you really read the Bible, you will see that he really did not follow the rules of decorum at all, which really was very important at that time. You know, there were all kinds of rules about who you could dine with and who you couldn't, you know, and he did not follow those rules. He dined with sinners and prostitutes and Samaritans who were the hated people of the Jews. He, he reached out to the Samaritan women. He took his disciples to Samaria to teach. I mean, he did some really outrageous things. I want to read to you from A Course in Miracles, because at this time in my life, when I was having this experience of being angry at Jesus and also doing these forgiveness processes, I read this paragraph. I also was having a hard time with people who were studying the Course in Miracles because they were saying doing things um, that uh, were very challenging to me. Um, I don't know who that is, but um, is it? It's Elisa. We need to mute her. <laughs> Someone could help me with that. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> what happens when we're recording is all of a sudden Lisa will be on the screen, you know, and that noise will be on the, on the recording. You know? So thank you, Kim, <laughs> for the editing you do for us. Um, anyway. At that time, I was studying the Course in Miracles, but also doing counseling at the Unity Church and really frustrated by some of the ways that people who studied the Course would take the teachings, like many people use the Bible. You know, they say, like a drunk uses a lampstand for support instead of illumination. Do you understand? So you take the scripture or the Course in Miracles and you just use it to support your outrageous behavior or your dumb idea or whatever it is. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's the Course of the Bible, you know, you use it for your own egotistical purposes. And I'll give you an example, like this one guy who'd been in recovery for just a short amount of time and had been a drunk for a lot of years, you know, came to me in a, in a session and, um, it's going to be 30 years ago. So, you know, it could be anybody, but I have to share the story because it's hilarious. We've all probably done it. He said, I been reading the course and I went and told my wife, I forgive her for everything. And she slammed the door in my face. <laughs> you, know, you know, that idea that forgiveness is not about, you know, taking your own personal inventory, you know? <laughs> you know, it's about them out there, you know, who can't see how wonderful I am, you know, or the people who would say things like, yeah, it doesn't matter, you know, if you cheat on your taxes or cheat on your wife, because it's all an illusion anyway, not, you know, so I found this paragraph this part of the course in miracles and forever fell in love with it because it sounded like jesus to me and it's chapter four the illusions of the ego the bible says that you should go with a brother or sister twice as far as they ask it certainly doesn't suggest you set them back on their journey devotion to your brothers and sisters can't set you back it can only lead to mutual progress. The result of genuine devotion is inspiration. A word which properly understood is the opposite of fatigue. 
To be fatigued is to be dispirited, but to be inspired is to be in the spirit. Be still and know that I am God. Do not embark on useless journeys. The journey to the cross should be the last useless journey. Do not dwell upon it, but dismiss it as accomplished. If you can accept it as your own last useless journey, you are free to join my resurrection. Until you do, your life is wasted. It merely reenacts separation, loss of power, and the futile attempts of the ego at reparation. Finally, will come the crucifixion and or death. Such repetitions are endless until you voluntarily give them up. This is one of my favorite lines in the whole course. Do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old rugged cross. The only message of the crucifixion is that you can overcome the cross. Until then, my second favorite line, until then you are free to crucify yourself as often as you like. This is not the gospel I intended to offer you. We have another journey to undertake. And if you will read these lessons carefully, they'll help you. <laughs> there was something in the humor of that. There was something in the beauty of that. There was something in the truth of that that spoke to me and kept me studying A Course in Miracles and teaching Course in Miracles for kids and really going deep into the words, the message and the meanings of the course. Traditional churches made Jesus into a God who died for our sins and just continued to perpetuate fear, guilt, and shame that were never the message for him. If you look at the person and all the wonderful historical documents that are being unearthed, even today, hundreds of more documents from the Dead Seas every day that speak about the compassion of Jesus, the love of Jesus. One of them is called the book of James, his brother. And it has a wonderful scripture in it, proving to me that this person that we call Jesus always wanted the best for us and believed that we could do even greater things than he did. And in this secret book of James, the brother of Jesus that was unearthed, he says, become better than me. Be like the son or the daughter of the Holy Spirit. Be eager. Be saved without being urged. <laughs> Become zealous on your own. If possible, I would like you to surpass even me. <laughs> That's my Jesus. We can say that he became God in action or God's instrument on the earth, love in a flesh body. His presence of love was so powerful that others were healed by his encouraging words, by his encouragement, and by his presence. And when he was crucified and died and then came back in his spirit body, although he was at first not recognizable to people, he literally transformed them in that appearance. He literally taught what he said, love never ends. Love one another as I have loved you. 
that is how they'll know you're my true friends. He gave us that new commandment, that new slant on the old Jewish commandment, love your neighbor as yourself, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind and soul. Those were of his Jewish tradition. This tweak of it was his. Love one another as I have loved you. That's how they, they'll know because there's no greater love than this to lay down your ego for your friends. Later, Paul told us, love is patient, love is kind. It's not boastful or arrogant. It doesn't insist on its own way, which was a big leap for someone who had some pretty bad qualities in his earlier life. And even when he became a Christian, he had some pretty bad qualities <laughs> in that life too, but he came to this patience and kindness and humility later in his life. And I like to think of that kind of love as what the Buddha calls the four immeasurable qualities, metta, karuna, mudita, upeka, metta, kindness, karuna, compassion, mudita. We don't even have an English word for this one. It means finding joy in the happiness and success of others. Isn't that a great word, mudita? Finding joy in other people's success and achievement. And upeka, also difficult to translate, equanimity, evenness of mind, calmness in the midst of a storm, poise, metta, karuna, mudita, apeka. This is the love that Jesus lived. So to understand how Jesus taught and healed and to become the healer and teacher of miracles that the talk, the Course in Miracles talks about and many of the scriptures talk about is to cultivate a heart of unselfish joy, kindness, patience, spontaneous sharing of happiness, generous appreciation of the good qualities of others a peaceful mind and a peaceful heart. Metta, Karuna, Mutita, Vipeka. This is what Jesus called loving one another as he did.